Today, I want to cover something that I see a lot of people on Discord and Reddit uh, get confused with a lot, and I haven't really found any good YouTube videos that cover it. But essentially, I want to cover what is an API and why do so many people keep talking about it in the context of ChatGPT and AI. I also want to cover what are API keys and how do I access mine. And finally, how do you get access to the elusive ChatGPT4 API? Quickly, what is an API? An uh, application programming interface. So basically, it's just how applications talk back and forth to one another. Uh, but we'll get into more detail about that later. Well, if you've looked at using some of the new tools that people are creating with ChatGPT, you've probably seen that you need to access your API keys. I'll show you how to do this from your OpenAI account and explain how it works in simple terms. So first, how does an API work and why do you need it? An API is basically a way for a program to communicate to another program or a website without having to navigate between all the user interface screens. As an example, imagine you're creating a program where you're feeding ChatGPT a type of food and ChatGPT will spit out 10 recipes based on that type of food that you like. Well, you don't want your program to force someone to open AI.com, log into their account, load a new ChatGPT chat session window, type into ChatGPT, run the entire program off ChatGPT before it would take you back to your program where it would have some of the responses and the user interface that you prefer. And APIs let you do this all in the background. Some sophisticated programs require API keys. This is essentially the backend access to OpenAI's ChatGPT that lets you run the program you're trying to use. You may say, well, why do you need my API keys? Why don't you just use your own? Why make it so complicated? Well, OpenAI limits how much a single account can use their API and charges for any usage beyond that limit. They charge based on how large your prompt is. Uh, it works in tokens. So one token is about four characters or three letters in a space, basically. What they charge ranges based on which version of ChatGPT you're using, but it can be anywhere from three cents per thousand tokens to 0 0.0004 cents per thousand tokens for some of the earlier versions of ChatGPT. So it's not very expensive, but you can imagine if you use this a lot that it could get fairly expensive or if you open it up to the masses that it would run up your bill. So programmers prefer that you use your own API keys rather than theirs. So where are your API keys located? Well, first we need to go to openai.com. Go to the menu tab and click on developers. From here, you can go to API reference. And then you'll see this green text here that says API keys. Click that. Here it's going to make you log in if you haven't already logged in. And then, bam. And then this window is all of your API keys. If you haven't generated any, there won't be any here. But you can simply click Create New Secret Key. You need to name, name your API key. So for this, I'm going to call it Video Key. and then create secret key. Now you're going to get this prompt that says, save this secret key somewhere safe and accessible. Uh, you won't be able to view it again. Uh, if you lose your secret key, you need to generate a new one. So basically copy this and whatever program you're trying to use it in, this is the key that you need to paste into that program to use it. But you won't be able to actually see this key again. Uh, it'll just have reference like this. So now you can take the API key that you just copied and paste it into whatever program is asking for your OpenAI API keys. So now you have your API keys. Depending on how you plan to use it, you may need to set up a billing account on OpenAI.com to account for large text prompts, and you'll pay based on the rates I mentioned before. OpenAI also lets you set monthly billing limits so that it won't let you spend beyond whatever cap you set for yourself. So there's no surprises at the end of the month. It's also worth noting here that paying for API access is separate from ChatGPT+, which gives you access to GPT-4 through the normal chat window. This is in addition to that $20 a month that they're charging right now. So if you need to set up a billing account on OpenAI, you just go to Billing, and then Set Up Paid Account. From here, you'll select that you're an individual or if you're working on behalf of a company, and then fill in your billing information. Once you've filled in all your billing information, simply click Set Up Payment Method. It says here they're going to hold a temporary $5 pending charge on your card uh, for the month. So now I can use my API keys for large prompts 
uh, beyond what OpenAI grants you for a new account. New accounts get $5 in free API credits, but once you exceed that, then you have to set up a billing account then to use the API. So this is all how you get access to ChatGPT 3.5 and earlier, but some people want access to the latest GPT-4 API. OpenAI is not just granting these, it's a case-by-case -case basis, so you actually have to apply. But if you think your project uh, requires GPT-4, this is how you join the waitlist. First, you can click to pricing and scroll down to the GPT-4 section. Uh, you can see the 8,000 or the 8K context is three cents per thousand tokens. 32K is six cents per thousand tokens. Um, and then that's for the prompt. And then your completion, you get charged. So you get charged for the prompt and GPT's answers. Uh, but you can click on learn more. And then you know, it's got a little blurb here, an article about it. And then you can click join API waitlist. Um, and then from here, you just fill in your information. Um, and then they'll actually ask you, um, what do you plan to use GPT-4 for? for? Um, and are there specific ideas using GPT-4 that you're excited about? Basically, they want to make sure the people that they're granting access actually need access so that it doesn't bog down their system. From what I've seen online, it can be hit or miss. I think there's an automated system that is granting access. Uh, some people applied day one and still have not received access now months later or a month later. Others applied and got access the next day based on the project that they're working on that requires ChatGPT. And that's all there is to it. Now you're set up to use your API keys. If you learn something new or just want to keep up with AI and what's happening in the space, subscribe. Thanks.